Assalamualaikum. Welcome to lecture one of taxation, which is the UK tax system from your section A. From your section A, we are going to have two lecture. That is lecture one and lecture two. And section B onwards, we are going to cover all the different types of taxes: income tax, corporation tax, capital gain tax, VAT, inheritance tax. This is just an overview of how the UK tax system is designed, the purpose of it, and how do you comply with it? Who needs to comply with it? What are the rules and all? And mostly, this section and the section B will come in your uh, section A and section B questions. That is for your multiple choice questions. Okay. it can be asked so that's why i have included every part of the syllabus i have not excluded any from your textbook all the lectures that i'm going to, going to cover for no matter whatever the subject on acca is from the kaplan latest textbook so let's start with the area that we are going to focus on this lectures we are going to start with purpose of tax types of tax direct versus indirect tax structure of uk tax sources of tax law interaction of uk and overseas tax tax avoidance versus tax evasion professional and ethical guidance okay you must have heard about tax right we often pay tax but what is this tax how much do we pay in tax how do we save tax all these things are going to be covered in your following lectures so you are going to have a basic very basic understanding of tax and let me tell you before i start this lecture let me remind you once again that tax is one of the easiest paper it's a very high scoring paper in your f level trust me when i'm saying this if you see the pass rate f6 that is taxation as the highest because you just have to remember the tax rules and you just need to apply them to the questions given and the questions are not very open ended unlike audit or your financial management or uh, your performance management the questions are very close ended it's like 1 plus 1 could be 2 1 plus 1 cannot be 3 so close and that type of exams are very easy to score you know the right and the wrong answer especially section a and section b of your taxation exam you can even score full marks there are very high chances you can score the maximum marks section 6 yes since you have to write you might uh, lose here or there's few marks but again you can score in 90s or 80s beyond 85 it's possible so for you if you are planning to if you need a mentor for taxation this channel is the right channel because some of you might find reading or going through a textbook very boring okay so now let's start with taxation there are two purpose of taxation first is economic okay economic purpose means see the way tax is designed it's going to have an impact on the economy okay taxation policies can influence other economic factors also like based on tax taxation will have an impact on inflation of the country on the employment level of the country on the import and the export then this can be used to influence the behavior of the business you can easily influence the behavior of the business by changing tax and as government objective changes taxation policies also changed okay now there are few things that the current uk tax system encourages and few things that they discourage let's see what they they encourage number 1 they encourage saving habit how 
by giving tax incentive tax incentive means you either don't have to pay tax at all or have to pay the lower tax than the normal tax rate that is the meaning of tax incentive okay so by giving this tax incentive governments can encourage individual to save for example they can save in their individual savings account isa and the saving income named rate band later when we go through incomes different types of income okay there is one income that is saving okay saving income there we are going to go through this term savings income nil rate band nil rate band means tax is 0% at that rate for savings income but we have to know what amount is that so right now we'll pause it when we go through the income tax we are going to explain what is this savings income nil rate band in detail okay that's an advantage okay next tax according to uk tax system the more charity you give the lower tax you have to pay so it is encouraging for you to give charity because if you give charity you are getting a tax incentive third this is for entrepreneurs and investors even they are getting tax relief for example if they invest in certain schemes there are certain schemes and we are going to go through those schemes later on you are going to get tax incentive and four carbon neutral monitoring by offering tax incentives on electric cars for example now everyone is switching to electronic cars because tax is low there because they want to reduce the carbon emission now discourage like for example petrol okay they are charging fuel duties on diesel and petrol so they are trying to reduce the consumption of petrol and diesel through it second alcohol smoking okay so they are imposing a heavy amount of taxes on cigarettes and alcoholic drinks to make it expensive for the consumer so that the consumption reduces third to control environmental pollution okay for example they have various taxes landfill taxes climate change taxes taxes on cars on the based on co2 emission the higher the co2 emission a car emits higher the tax and the fourth one uh, okay so these are the three now second purpose is social justice first one is for economic reasons to control pollution to uh, reduce the consumption of uh, smoking or alcoholic drinks next purpose is social justice because it is because of the tax that makes rich richer and poor poorer so you see the income inequality is higher now there is a very huge gap between the rich portion of the population and the poor, poor uh, portion of the population this because of tax okay now there are ways how this is done one is known as progressive tax okay progressive tax means as your income rises look at the word progressive progressive means something is increasing it's progressing so as your income rises you have to pay higher taxes on that higher income now for example in uk okay this year the rule is on your income up to 37700 uk pound tax is 20% as it goes to 150 up to 150000 it is 40% income tax is a very good example of progressive tax higher the income higher the tax next is the regressive tax regressive tax means as your income rises proportion of tax that you have to pay falls it's not that you are paying lower taxes it's that because your income is increasing so much that now the tax that you are paying is not so much for you you understand it for example the tax that you have to pay on the liter of a petrol is the same whatever level of income you are earning that is fixed let's say you have to pay 10% on petrol earlier you were earning 5000 
but now you're earning 50,000. So if you are taking 10% of that 50,000, it is still less when you're taking 10% of the 5,000. You understanding? The portion reduces. That's why it is a regressive tax. Because for a low income earner, they are paying in huge proportion of their income is going as a tax. But for a high income earner, the taxes will be less for them. That's why it's a regressive tax. Third one is proportional tax. Proportional means as your income increases, your proportion of tax remains constant. One example is corporation tax, which we are going to cover later on. Corporation tax is, by the way, paid by companies on their profits. It's not paid by individuals. So corporation tax this year is at 19%. Okay. Corporation tax is an example of proportional tax. No matter whatever your level of income or gain, corporation tax is at 19% only. Fourth one is ad valorem tax. Ad valorem means a tax is calculated as a percentage of the value of the item. That is an example of this. For example, 20% VAT on most goods sold in UK. There are only few items I think that is exempted from VAT, which we are going to cover later when we go through VAT in detail. That is the last section of this uh, taxation syllabus also, VAT. But for now, know that most of the goods that are sold in UK, we are paying VAT on it, 20%. Okay, that's a ad volume tax. Now, types of tax. These are the various types of tax that later we are going to cover. Income tax, NIC. In UK, every citizen has to pay this national insurance contribution. Okay, so from their income, this is deducted. Capital gain tax. Capital gain tax, also we are going to cover later. But for now, know it briefly. That capital gain tax means any gain that you are making on capital asset. For example, you are buying or selling. One example is building or land. If you are selling a building at a profit, that's a capital gain tax. Okay, you pay a CTD tax on that. So for example, on a valuable item, if you are buying and selling and uh, incurring a profit, on that profit you have to pay tax. Mostly this is for buying and selling of properties and all. Buildings, lands or any antiques or any valuable uh, items like jewelries or something like that. You pay CGD tax. CGD tax also for residential property rate is different. Commercial rate is different. Inheritance tax. Inheritance tax means when you have inherited, let's say a property from your father or grandfather, a house. On that you have to pay tax. That is inheritance tax. Anything that you have inherited from your uh, previous generation. Okay. And let's say the owner of the state dies. Now you, because you have inherited that property, you have to pay the tax. There are some rules on how much they have to pay. Okay. Corporation tax. Corporation tax is paid by the company. Individuals don't pay that, okay? And VAT. So the rates of this are different. The way you account for this, each type of tax is different. So our whole tax subject is based on this type of taxes only. This six type of tax that we are going to cover. But under the six also, there are so many things. For example, under income tax, we have to know the types of income. There are so many different types of income. Employment income, self-employment income, pension, redundancy, so many. Okay. Now, income tax paid by individuals on their earnings. On their taxable earnings. Not all the earnings are taxable. Okay. For example, self-employment and employment. If you're an employee, you have to pay tax on your salary. If you're self-employed, you still have to pay tax on your uh, income. Or any investment income, still you have to pay income tax. NIC. This is paid by both individual, okay, both self-employed or employed. Thank you. 
Okay, and also it is payable by businesses, for example, sole trader or company in relation to their employees. CGD, capital gain tax, it is paid on certain type of capital assets when you dispose. For example, land, building, shares, even shares are there, okay. And any smaller items, antiques, because they are capital assets, okay. Inheritance tax. If you are receiving any gifts during an individual's lifetime, you have to pay an inheritance tax on that gift. It, it could be payable by companies also on their income and gains. Uh, I'm sorry. A mistake has been done. For inheritance tax, uh, sorry, that the tax which is payable by companies on the corporation tax. Okay, corporation tax is paid by companies. And for inheritance, it is payable by personal representatives on the value of the state of the deceased person. If a person has died, whoever is taking over that, whoever is a representative of, of that state is going to pay that inheritance tax on the value of the state. And that is payable by the final consumer of that goods and service and VAT is also an in indirect tax the difference between VAT and other type of taxes are all the other type of taxes are direct but VAT is an indirect tax okay reason direct tax tax bills directly pay tax to HMRC okay now direct revenue taxes are based on income and profits that means more you earn more you have to pay as a tax like income tax and corporation tax they are direct revenue tax the next one is direct capital tax okay under direct also two types direct revenue and direct capital direct capital taxes are your capital gain tax because it is on capital assets and inheritance tax also because you are inheriting something of a capital type of nature like a state or something or a building or a house okay indirect tax is collected from the taxpayer via an intermediary such as a retail shop okay the intermediary then pays the tax to HMRC they collect it from us and pay to HMRC that is an example. 
because consumer is paying back to the supplier, supplier is then paying it to the HMRC. Structure of UK tax system. Okay, in UK tax system, the body responsible for all the regulations and all is HMRC. HM Revenue and Custom. Okay, HMRC is the government department that controls and administers all areas of UK tax law. Anything to do with UK tax is HMRC. You will see this name. What is the purpose of HMRC? Make sure that money is available to fund the UK's public service. Second, help families with targeted financial support. Next, heading up HMRC and the commissioners whose main duties are implement statute law, oversee the UK tax administration. Staff who work for HMRC are known as officers of revenue and custom. Okay. HMRCs have offices all over the UK and some of them might have specialized functions also, especially when dealing with international business or huge businesses. Most taxpayers will never directly deal with their local tax office. Why? Because now HMRC encourages us, the taxpayers, to file their own tax returns online. You can use this website www.hmrc.government.uk. Okay, so through this website, any of your queries would be answered, or you can even uh, email them. Okay, there, there are some self assessment helpline available there. Go to that website and check it for yourself. For your exam purpose, you don't have to know all this in detail. Okay, just know that taxpayers do not now deal directly with a local tax office because every one of us are filing our own returns only online and we have to submit online. Taxpayers are encouraged to file their tax returns online and pay by electronic means. This applies to everyone. So you have to file your returns and pay tax electronically now. Both companies, companies have no choice by the way. Companies have to do it electronically only. But when it comes to individual taxpayers, they can still send their returns or payment by post if they wish but it is advisable to go online and most of uh, they it goes online only okay companies have no choice now so under self assessment the responsibility for reporting the correct amount of taxable income and paying the correct amount of tax is delegated to the taxpayer to self assess so you as a taxpayer have to self assess whether you are paying the correct amount of tax whether you are filing the correct amount of taxable income to HMRC you only have to assess yourself now okay but still offices of revenue and custom they can still be requested to do the calculation on your behalf but for companies Officers of HMRC cannot help them. Companies have to do their own thing. But for individual taxpayers, yes, employees of HMRC can help them. Now, this is the source of tax law. So your tax law in UK is not derived from one source. It's derived from multiple source. And we are going to cover them. First, statute law and case law. Statement of practice. Extra statutory concessions. Internal HMRC manual. Detailed technical guidance and HMRC website leaflets and booklets. UK tax law is taken from all the sources. Okay. Now we'll go through them in detail. First one is statute law. This law is mandatory. You have to comply with this law. No choice. And it is updated every year. This law is updated every year. What, which, what we know as Finance Act. So this year, our Finance Act is what? 2022. Finance Act 2022 is the act which we are taking this year. Each year, this will be updated. Okay. Now, statutory instruments are issued where detailed notes are required on an area of tax legislation. Case law is the next. 
case law refers to the decisions made in tax cases brought before the court okay so here often the case challenges the current tax legislation or argues a certain interpretation of the tax law that should be applied this rulings are binding and therefore provide guidance on the interpretation of tax legislation now hmrc guidance tax legislation can be very complex by the way okay it's complex for normal ordinary people to understand so that's why it's very easy that it could be misinterpreted that's why further guidance is issued by hmrc in order to explain how to implement the law and give their interpretation of the law okay statement of practice here it provides the hmrc's interpretation of tax law and it clarifies and gives details on how this rule should be applied next is internal hmrc manual here hmrc have their own manuals only okay which they produce for their staff to give guidance on how to interpret the law this could be made available to the public also esc okay this is relaxation of the strict letter of tax law under certain circumstances you can relax the law but remember hmrc can make extra statutory concessions to administer the tax system fairly and effectively but cannot counter the clear words of tax law you cannot change the rule or change the words of the tax law it has to be fair and it has to be effective even if you are relaxing the rules under certain circumstances it has to be fair also effective also okay and esc confirms that hmrc will apply a tax law to a specific group in a more favorable way than another okay it happens so they will apply a tax law to a specific group in a more favorable than another possible interpretation why do they do that to avoid undue hardship unfairness or illogical result okay sometimes when hmrc is applying a tax law okay there could be various ways to apply that tax law but they are applying it in a way that gives a more favorable result okay interpretation could be so many but they are choosing which is giving more favorable which is more favorable because they do not want to make the application of tax law hard on someone unfair or giving an illogical result HMRC publishes current extra statutory concessions and all taxpayers in the status situation can rely on this it is the government policy for the content of issued esc to eventually be withdrawn or enacted into law either you have to withdraw it later on or you have to enact it into a law hmrc's website this is for general public because here they give explanations on the various tax issues in non technical language everyone does not understand tax language by the way for ordinary user you have to explain them in an easy language avoiding technical jargons and all detailed technical guidance this is like this is specially aimed at tax expert or tax agent okay because they can explain tax issues in a more technical detail this will not normally be applicable for general public okay it is only for tax experts and agents and tax consultant and all hms is brief provides a detailed technical guidance on a specific tax issue that is arising in the year any tax issue is there in that year hms brief will be there in under hmrc briefs it will be there now comes interaction of uk and overseas tax what we know as double taxation agreement 
when a company is doing a business in their home country there is no problem with tax because he is only paying tax in his home country but what if it is uh, having business here and there as well so he has to pay tax here as well as there and the tax rates are different right so as because the government of uk does not want their citizen to face to pay tax on that income twice one in uk one overseas they have come up with double taxation agreement under double taxation agreement there are certain advantages for the uk citizen okay so wherever this treaty is there this double taxation treaty this will be given more importance over the uk domestic tax law so either what is the purpose of this that means you don't have to pay tax twice on the same income they can exempt certain overseas income from tax in uk that means if you have earned anything in overseas you don't have to pay tax for that in uk or another way could be some relief could be given there where you have paid tax in the two countries on that same income so either of this two they could be done okay where no such treaty exist let's say double taxation treaty is not there and remember this is bilateral bilateral means both the person will benefit uk and the one overseas both of them will get this benefit they only have to pay tax on that income once and if they have paid in both the country they will be given some tax incentive but uk being so kind even if treaty does not exist uk system we are not talking about overseas overseas might suffer there uk system still allows for relief to be given where double tax is paid so they are not allowing you to pay tax twice on the same income this is what double taxation agreement does for example let me explain you this through numbers let's say you have earned an income overseas okay now you are remitting it back to the parent the parent country is uk you have to remit that foreign income back to your country after you have paid the tax there convert it into your home country once you convert it into your home country again you have to pay tax in uk so let's say uk and germany okay in germany you have paid 30% tax uk is 20% right so uh okay we'll take the other way around let's say in germany tax rate is uh 20% and in uk it's 30% so you have paid 20% tax on germany once it comes to uk uk tax rate is 30% more than germany right so you are not paying 30% you are only paying 10% why because out of 30% of uk tax 20% you have already paid in germany uk tax uh, germany tax was 20% now you are only paying the balance 30 minus 20 the balance the difference only you are paying in uk that is 10% this is what double taxation treaty does okay but but for your taxation double taxation relief for individuals and companies will not be asked you will not be asked through numbers and anything you just have to know this much this much is enough but when you come to my atx class you have to know the double taxation relief this will be that time it will be question but for taxation relax it will not be asked now coming to tax avoidance and tax evasion what is it you have to know this word because one is legal the other one is illegal tax evasion and tax avoidance tax evasion is illegal that means you are taking actions to avoid or reduce tax but through illegal means this is the meaning of tax evasion tax avoidance on the other hand is you are doing the same thing but 
it is through legal means so how do you tax uh, what are the forms of tax evasion you are not giving information you are not giving correct information second for example you are not declaring your taxable income to hmrc that's illegal second way could be you are submitting false information first you are not even giving information second you are giving information but false information for example you are claiming expenses that have not been incurred because if you claim expenses that means you are telling that this expenses could be reduced from my income you have to pay low tax right some expenses you cannot claim against tax okay but you are claiming even if i have not incurred that expenses so it's illegal okay because it's illegal there's a risk that you have to pay a fine or imprisonment as a penalty tax avoidance on the other hand you can also use it as a tax planning okay here also you want to minimize tax but it is tax planning it's legal okay you are not misleading hmrc for example you are making tax saving by investing in individual savings account here you are not misleading hmrc so it's legal so basically what you are doing is you are trying to invest on some schemes tax schemes are there you are basically utilizing loopholes in the tax legislation every tax legislation have some loopholes right so you are just taking advantage of that loopholes okay but in the future remember hmrc might bring up some new rules to in order to reduce this loophole so that you might not be able to take that much advantage okay that's what hmrc have done they have become smarter they know that you are will try to avoid tax by doing some tax planning so in order that you pay the tax okay what are they doing they want to reduce this tax advantages that are gained by tax payer even though it's not illegal but of course they want a high amount of tax right their purpose is to collect as much tax from you as possible okay hmrc's job is only that so they will try to bring all sort of schemes in order to take away your tax advantage from you but again understand this is not illegal okay so tax evasion illegal tax avoidance is legal okay understand the difference between these two so hmrc have introduced this hmrc has now told they became more strict now because they also know that we are smart we will try to avoid do all this tax planning and all they are now saying disclose any schemes you are investing to avoid tax disclose you have to give details of that scheme to hmrc next g a a r general anti abuse rule it says okay to counter artificial and abusive there are some schemes that are artificial and abusive scheme okay that means you cannot take them as a reasonable course of action so you cannot just invest into the schemes to deliberately avoid tax you can't do that according to general anti abuse rule that means you are abusing the tax now there is a question test understanding one we are going to identify out of this three which is tax evasion and which is tax avoidance first one you are selling a capital asset in may instead of march so that gain is taxed in the later tax year it's tax evasion or avoidance it's tax avoidance it's in green so if it's tax avoidance i have highlighted it in green if it's tax evasion is in red red is a sign of danger green is a calm sign good sign a positive sign okay next you are changing the bill of 700 to 7000 so that you can claim larger tax deduction it's a tax evasion very clear cut you are misguiding hmrc 700 bill you're showing is 7000 tax evasion last one you are moving fund into an isa account so that interest can be earned tax free it's a tax avoidance 
So only the second one is tax evasion. That's why it's in red. Now, professional and ethical guidance. You must have covered this in your previous paper. Okay. In fact, in your ACCA, all your ACCA papers have this. The five code of ethics and conduct of ACCA. Known as five fundamental principles. Which every ACCA member have to go by. They are objectivity, professional competence and due care, professional behavior, integrity and confidentiality. Now we'll go through it. Objectivity means you are making an independent decision. Members, you should not be influenced by someone. You should not be biased. Okay. Decision should be yours. You should be independent. Okay. Professional competence means you should have the professional knowledge and skills that is expected of you to provide the service. Okay. And members should be diligent also. They should be careful also. Okay. In their performance. So that they apply with their technical and professional standard when giving professional services. Professional behavior. Members should not do any action that can bring a discredit to their profession which brings down the reputation of their profession. Integrity, being honest and straightforward, not hiding anything, not lying, not cheating. And confidentiality, members should keep any information that they have collected from their client confidential. Unless, under certain circumstances, you can disclose them. Okay? For example, if you have authority given to you by the member, uh, given to you by your client, you can disclose. If your legal and professional duty says you to disclose, for example, during money laundering cases, then you cannot keep it confidential. You have to disclose it to the court or to the relevant authority. So, any confidential information, you cannot use it for your own personal advantage. Now, advising on taxation issues. Remember, both company and the individual, they have duties and responsibilities toward HMRC and their client. Okay. It could be a company or an individual. Both responsibilities are towards two parties. One is your client, one is your HMRC. Next. A member must never be knowingly involved in tax evasion. It's illegal. Distinction between tax planning and aggressive tax avoidance. Even though both are legal, okay? Acceptable tax planning is also legal. Aggressive tax avoidance, tax avoidance is also legal. So, there are issues going on between those two. Okay. I mean, to clearly uh, distinct between these two, it's a little difficult. It's not very clear cut. And as a result of the ACCA's ethical guidance, members must not create, encourage, or promote tax planning, any tax planning arrangements that set out to achieve results that are against the intention of the parliament okay and it is highly artificial and seek to exploit shortcomings between the relevant legislation so you should not do that as an ACCA member you should not encourage your client to take any such actions through your tax planning okay that goes against the intention of parliament when they are enacting their legislation or which is artificial and seeking to exploit shortcomings between that legislation. Dealing with HMRC. You will be asked a question on ethics as well. Okay. So be very careful. Any information that you are providing to HMRC should be accurate and up to date. Okay. A member must not assist a client to plan or commit any offense. 
as a tax consultant or as a tax advisor you cannot help your client to commit an any offense if a member becomes aware that client is committed a tax irregularity that means they are not submitting their tax on time or giving incorrect tax as a member if you become aware of your client what is your duty your duty is you have to discuss it with the client first you see you have to follow this order okay you cannot say i'm going to resign you cannot say i'm going to take him to the court no you first have to discuss it with the client and ensure proper disclosure is made this is the first place you have to go to your client examples like so these are the examples where your client might commit a tax irregularity for example they are not declaring income that is taxable they are claiming relief to which they are not entitled or they are not notifying hmrc when they have when they clearly know that they have made a mistake and they know that they have paid less tax or they have got more in repayment where a client has made an error you first have to see whether it is a error or a fraud if it's an error and if it and if it has been discovered you should explain this to your client that they have to notify hmrc and if they don't do what could be the consequences you have to tell to your client if the client still refuses to make full disclosure to hmrc you have to explain the consequences you have to see whether the material amount is material or not and whether you can continue to act for that client or not if client still refuses to disclose you have to not act for that client you have to stop acting for that client and you have to write to hmrc that you no longer acting for them you are no longer their tax consultant or tax advisor or whatever but you are not disclosing the reason why why you have ceased you are just saying that you are you have ceased you have stopped to act for your client but you are not giving them the reason why you have stopped okay and you have to see also whether you have to report it to the money laundering regulations or not you have to see usually when you are suspecting a fraud or anything you have to disclose them okay one question at least one question on this area 100% you are going to get there is no doubt so you have to know this okay means what you have to do we have a question also on this later on coming to money laundering regulations even in your triple a audit this will be there as well as atx okay what is money laundering money laundering is used for offenses either you are benefiting from the proceed or you are concealing some proceed which comes from crime that is known as money laundering and it's a it's an offense which has a very uh, what do i say the penalties are very strict on it okay you can be sent to prison also for it so any businesses that are within regulated sector like banks investment companies insurance companies pensions fund management fund management company this are highly regulated sector you have to appoint mlro within this form money laundering reporting officer they have to have okay and they will then decide whether transaction should be reported to nca national crime agents where a report is made the client should not be informed of this remember if you are deciding it to send it to nca you should not inform it to a client why if you if your client becomes aware of it chances are he might be he might disappear or it might be very difficult for you to trace him okay this is known as tipping off it's an offense you should not make them aware of that you are reporting on them they should not be aware of it and a report to nca does not remove your requirement to disclose 
to HMRC. You still have to disclose information to HMRC. You have a duty towards HMRC. Now, dishonest conduct of tax agent. Some tax agents also does dishonest conduct. Okay. So for them, civil penalty is up to 50,000 pounds. If penalty exists, okay, the minimum penalty of 5,000, okay. Any cases where the penalty exists, the minimum penalty, so minimum penalty is 5,000. That means this is the least, beyond this it will not fall. Any penalty will be above 5,000 and above 5,000. So if it exists 5,000, HMRC can then they might publish details of that penalized tax agent also. Anything less than 5,000, tax agent will not be, uh, details of the tax agent will not be given, whoever is penalized. Anything above 5,000, he will be, he could be disclosed, the details of that tax agent. With agreement of the tax tribunal, HMRC can access the working papers of that dishonest agent also. Now, test your understanding too. So, we are done with this lecture. Now, we'll do uh, some four to five questions before I summarize this whole lecture. Here, when you are checking a recent tax computation from HMRC, you have noticed that error has been made. Okay. That means your client is now receiving a larger repayment than he should have made. What action should you take? This was the question I was talking about that you can very much expect in your tax exam. They will give you a position of your client doing something which is not correct. What action should you take as a member? So as I told you first, okay, because they told error has been made. So this is the solution of it. Position should be reviewed carefully to confirm that an error has been made. First decide an error or a fraud. Okay. Next is the client. Next part is client. So you have to contact your client whether you can disclose the error to HMRC or not. And you should also inform your client of the consequences of not disclosing the error. For example, you have to warn them that what could be the interest of them? What could be the penalty that they might have to pay if they are not disclosing to HMRC? Third, if client refuses, what is the next step? So basically you have to, at each step you have to say, if client refuses, you have to do this. If client refuses, you have to do this. If client refuses, you have to do this. Until the last stage is where you are going to cease to add as a tax agent for them. That is the last stage. Okay. So if the client refuses to allow the disclosure, considering the amount is material, you have to see to it whether you can continue to add as a client for the client or not. If it is decided that you cannot add for them, you have to inform to HMRC in writing without disclosing the reason why you don't want to add for it. And last, you have to see whether you have to report to NCA under money laundering regulation. That is National Crime Agency. Next question. Which of this is a statutory legislation? Case law, ESC, HMRC statement of practice or income tax at 2007. Think. Statutory means something which is mandatory. It is D, income tax, 2007. Because this is mandatory. Okay. And it's, and it comes from, it, it comes from statute law. Well, the other three are not part of statute law, A, B, and C. Test your understanding four. Okay. You as a DCCA member discovers that your client has not declared a source of income. Which of the following is correct? A. You should immediately notify HMRC. B. You should notify your client and explain the consequences. C. You should report it to NCA. D. You should cease to add for the client. Correct answer is B. 
you should first notify your client and explain the consequences. Other steps comes later. Which of the following is an indirect tax? Corporation, CGD, income and VAT. It's VAT. And which of the following taxes are not paid by company? Income, corporation, NIC and VAT. It is income tax because the remaining three are paid by company. Old income tax is paid by individual. So let's summarize this whole lecture. We first went through purpose of UK tax. Two purpose that is social justice. So under social justice, we went through various type of tax. Four types of tax. What are they? Progressive, regressive, proportional and ad border and economic. For example, to control inflation, unemployment, balance of payment. Okay. Then types of tax, direct and indirect. Under indirect, it's VAT, direct income tax, CGD, inheritance, corporation, and NIC. Then we move to UK tax, the structure of them and HMRC. The structure means, for example, case law, statute law, and all. Then from UK tax, we moved on to ethics. These are the five fundamental ethics objectivity, professional competence and due care, professional behavior, confidentiality, and integrity. Tax avoidance and tax evasion. Tax evasion is illegal, tax avoidance is legal. Dealing with HMRC. For example, if your customer refuses to disclose what you have to do, if further he refuses what you have to do, okay. Infraction of UK and overseas tax, that is double taxation treaty. And yes, then sources of tax law, HMRC guidance. This other HMRC guidance. They have their technical guidance for tax expert. They have their website. This is for general public. They have internal manuals for their employees. Extra statutory concession where they relax the strict laws under certain circumstances and statements of practice. Then statute law, which is mandatory like the Finance Act 2022 and the case law, which is based on the cases. So that's it for lecture one of tax. I hope that you found this useful and I shall see you in lecture two. Lecture two is again going to be a very interesting lecture, a lengthy lecture, of course, because I'm going to cover income tax. How do you calculate income tax? The sources of income. What are the income tax rates? for this year, Finance Act 2022. And meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and all this lecture will be available under one single playlist that is tax lecture. You can access this uh, PPT slide from my channel. You have to go to about section on my channel, scroll down, links will be given to you. That is tax lecture. Click there and you can download the PDF slides for downloading the textbooks of ATX and TX same place but you have to go to ACC material and when you click on ACC material you can download all the books which whatever is available there thank you for watching and I shall see you in the next lecture